All right, we'll round it out with number 10 here. This is a guy that I managed to get in uh, with my ranking. So I actually kind of like Xavier Hutchinson. I'll give you my film notes here. High effort player with a diverse route tree ability to shake at the line or at the break point. Not one to run away from a good man corner. Most of his work came in short areas due to the offense. Shows terrific body control and overall athleticism with the ball in the air. Several high degree of difficulty catches on tape. Uh, another body catcher, definitely not yep. a burner, but he is definitely capable of beating his man at the catch point downfield. Not really a yak but yak guy, but he is a useful run blocker, uh, good size, so that could get him on the field for a few more downs if he ingratiates himself with his coaches that way. Overall, I just thought Hutchinson, and then actually his, his testing numbers were pretty solid. I think he ran a 4-5-3, uh, which was good to see. So the athleticism, athleticism a little bit better than perhaps I even thought based on the tape so I don't think this is a necessarily a high ceiling player uh, but I do think he has the look of kind of a professional wide receiver um, good size will get on the field to run block he'll make himself useful at least in the NFL um, so I do think this is a guy that's probably going to see the NFL field and I do think that quite honestly like there's once we get into this range, like we said about Boutte, there's not a lot to get excited about. So you're looking for guys that might actually get in, get on the field, get in your lineup, and might give you those points um, on those weeks where you might need to stream somebody in. You've got injuries to yep. most of your starters. Like we're talking about guys that are going in the third, fourth round of your rookie drafts at this point, right? So um, now my question before you get into Hutchinson a little too much more <laughs> is – is this kind of the tier, whether it's Hutchinson or a different player, but after Boutte or is it before Boutte, is this kind of the tier where you're kind of breaking off from the wide receivers or sh wide receivers and just saying, you know, this is this is where I'm just into whatever running back is out there that had decent draft capital. Is that where we're at with this group of wide receivers that we're talking about now? 100%. And that's why I'm trying to contain the smile so much is you're a better segue man than I gave you credit for, because we were talking about exactly <laughs> this before we went live. And, and that that's the, the hit rates that you see of third round, fourth round wide receivers. And there's even kind of like a common, it's starting to shift a little bit of the analytic model and obviously of the film model as well. That kind of the fourth round is the new third round for running backs because of the devaluing of the position and, and the depth of the, the position available as well. But with that said is you're going to get legitimate guys that can hit and have analytic profiles that say they have good hit rates, even with fourth round draft capital at the running back position in these tiers. Whereas guys like, Xavier Hutchinson, even I really like Raheem Jarrett. I really like Tank Dell for, I mean, the guy led the NCAA in receiving touchdowns with at a ridiculous rate at Houston. So the, these guys have positive analytic profiles, but the only thing that really makes them good bets as we've been reiterating over and over again would be them breaking through that draft capital model. Whereas a lot of the running backs that we get in this tier don't need to do that to be safe bets. Like guys like you, if you see Tucker's fall, the Kendry Millers, you even get a little bit later with the rush on Johnson's, the Muhammad Ibrahim's like, absolutely. I'm going to go after all of those guys before these later tier wide receivers. But I do also think it's important to mention as we were, as the dynasty market kind of devalues this class is it's a deep class. Like we just talked about 10 legitimately viable wide receivers and there's running backs that you should prefer over them. Like there, it's a very mm -hmm. deep class. And I think that's getting forgotten about. Yep. Yeah, totally agree. Uh, why don't you dig into it a little bit more? You definitely have Rakeem Jarrett and Tank Dell a little bit higher than I do. So why don't you talk a little bit about those two players and why you would kind of prefer them out of this tier of players? Yeah, I mean, they're just the upside. It's that upside bet. Obviously, you know, we don't see underside receivers like Tank Dell um, who don't have 4-2 speed and 99th percentile speed scores really dominate much at the NFL. But obviously the production profile, the market share, the touchdowns, the target share, all of it is box checked for his final season at Houston. Um, he does have positive athleticism, obviously. It's just not the best in the class, especially considering his size. He's not like a Rondale Moore um, percentile athlete at that size. 
but with that said, he's he's got that ceiling, that ceiling of no, not wide receiver one. You're not going to really find anyone with that analytic ceiling in this tier. But that guy that can break through, have big upside weeks and be somebody maybe even um, Rondale Moore esque Wandale Robinson, at least on the market that people still get positively attached to. So whether they are producing on your rosters or not, they have enough positive check um, boxes checked in their profile that they can get a little bit more of a return than some of these guys that are high upside shots with much lower floors and things of that nature. And same for Rakeem Jarrett. Rakeem Jarrett at his ceiling really is the best yards after the catch receiver in this draft class. Like at his ceiling, he's Debo Samuel. That really is what Rakeem Jarrett is at a ceiling. The issue with him is that ceiling is going to be uncommonly difficult for him to reach based on the regression that we saw at Maryland. And yes, there's like some nuance there. The nuance being it's Maryland. You know how bad that offense was? But that said, he was still getting outproduced by other players on his team, which is never going to help an analytic profile. But he was, that said, <laughs> dominating every touch after the catch, which a lot of these receivers have positive yards after the catch profiles in general, but not to that ceiling level. So those are why I like those two players specifically. Yeah. Yeah, I can't really argue with that. Um, for myself, a couple guys that I'm a little bit more into, Parker Washington, I just think is yeah. kind of a little bit more of a uh, kind of that professional slot receiver. I think like a Cole Beasley kind of guy, uh, but definitely <laughs> Alec more Pierce yak. is who he reminds me of, to be honest, for the most like okay. recent draft cycle. Sure, yeah. Um, definitely a yak guy, um, kind of built like a running back a little bit. Um, so he definitely has that to him. Definitely like good hands, like some of the better hands, honestly, in this class that I would say um, was demonstrated on tape anyway. So I definitely like Parker Washington. I don't think this is a guy who's going to command a huge target share, but he is definitely a guy if he goes to the right spot and he's the every down wide receiver three as the slot guy, then he could be a valuable player. You saw like even Cole Beasley have fantasy relevance. 100%. Seasons, J- right? Jamison so, Crowder years in Washington. Yeah. 100%. These guys have yeah. valuable seasons for sure. Yeah. And Parker Washington, um, a guy that I picked up, I have one rookie draft that I did before, obviously the NFL draft, and I picked him up for free after my four round uh, rookie draft was completed, so I was able to get him on waivers after that was completed. So definitely, you're talking about a tier of guy who's not highly ranked for the NFL draft. Uh, he's going to go pretty late, um, but you can throw him on your taxi and just see if he lands anywhere, if he sticks anywhere, if he develops into that kind of role. So that's Parker Washington. I think A.T. Perry is a guy that some people are pretty excited about. There's some buzz um, around A.T. from Wake Forest for sure. Yeah, definitely he's got some height, speed. Um, he's got that kind of profile to him. Decent production as well, yeah. um, which has some people excited. What's your thoughts on Perry? I mean, I think Perry's kind of that old prototype almost. Like he's it's kind of slow, <laughs> kind of a yeah. big-bodied red zone threat, but it doesn't really have the big body <laughs> either. You know what I mean? Like So it's kind of that old prototype wide receiver. Can definitely be productive, almost in a similar vein to Parker Washington, but doesn't have as many positives to his profile. Um, I'll segue into it because I think Jaden Reed's a guy that we should touch on before we close out. He, he does have a lot of positives to that profile, um, even more so than a Rakeem Jarrett, kind of more similar to a Tank Dell as far as the analytic checkboxes go. There's a lot of really good things that you saw in that final season. Yes, a little bit of a later breakout. Obviously, that's something that we've talked about can create some difficulties when rounding out an analytic profile. But yeah, I think Jaden Reed, especially if he gets the that draft capital that's buzzing around him where he's kind of sneaking into the second round of the top 75, I don't know if he'll actually go there, but there seems to be some hype and I don't know where it's coming from. But I like Jaden Reed's profile. I'd like it rounded out with some positive draft capital. Otherwise, he's kind of, again, just stuck in this tier of they're fine dart throws and guys that you can stuff on your taxi. But really hoping for that true upside is, you know, you you have to weigh risk over cost. And, and I think most of the running backs offer similar production upside with a much higher hit rate. Mm-hmm. Definitely agree. Three more guys just going off NFL Mock Draft Database that are currently slated to go in the third round. If this holds, obviously, Rasheed Rice, Tyler Scott, Jonathan Mingo, 
You got any interest in any of these guys, Matt? I'm honestly pretty out. I know Rasheed Rice in particular has gotten some buzz. Uh, I was Rasheed was pretty, somebody that neither one of us even ranked. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I was just pretty underwhelmed, quite honestly, with this tape. Uh, I was kind of surprised that his athletic numbers looked halfway decent because I didn't think that he was actually going to be an NFL caliber athlete. Uh, I was pretty surprised by that. Uh, apparently he didn't have a great senior bowl either, but he's still up here. So that was a little surprising to me. I'm just kind of all the way out on rice personally, Tyler Scott, a speed guy, Mingo kind of, a a late riser, I guess you would say in the process. There seems to have a few fans, but again, not somebody that really does any, like there's not a trait for me to hang my hat on really. I don't exactly. think and well say said, this yep. is how he wins, uh, at the NFL level to the point where he's valuable for fantasy at least. So um, the only guy, honestly, I know he's probably not even like he's close to not getting drafted. If you go by these numbers, um, these average mock draft numbers, but Bryce Ford Wheaton at least has the Super size athletic. speed profile yep. that you're kind of interested in where you can squint your eyes and tell yourself a story about how he could get there someday. <laughs> yeah. Um, and on tape, he wasn't terrible. He had a little bit of that red zone threat to him where he was able to yeah. box out. He was able to make uh, the body control kind of catches that you like to see. So uh, if there is one guy that, you know, at, whether it's after your rookie draft is over and you're looking for somebody to stash on your taxi, uh, or if it's in that last pick, the 412, um, Bryce Ford Wheaton is somebody that I am considering in those spots. Anybody else for you, Matt, that we haven't talked about that we should? I mean, I, I want to bring up these guys because they have incredible production, and it's kind of why I put them at the very last of my tier, but it's Puka Nakau and Andre Ausivas. And Andre Ausivas uh, transferring from Juco and, and everything and then having one productive year at Arizona is eh. like it's I'm not yeah the, we see this a lot though like we do see th this a lot with guys that, that transfer to power five conferences and have a decent year but the NFL doesn't feel the same way um about these guys that we do and then you know a la Jalen Tolbert's they're yeah because they haven't had the repetitions against solid competition you see them fizzle out very quickly um so that said like I, I do have them as recognizable names because they have positives in their analytic profile but had to bring them up as like these guys are truly like pretty bad bets puka being from byu right it, it is actually mm -hmm. like you know you, you see a lot of uh enamoration with these small school and small conference receivers happen every year um even if it is as like fourth round picks late thirds again a la jalen tolbert and it's just a bad bet every time mm-hmm 